angry guy here, and friend zone men are ending their friendships with women. Guys, please help get this channel to 100,000 subscribers by subscribing to the channel if you already haven't, like the video, and turn on notifications to never miss another video ever again. Now let's begin. So friend-zoned men are ending their relationships, their friendships with women. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the first video. Men don't stay friends with you after you've rejected them. Some women get offended when she's done friend zoning a guy and he wants nothing to do with her. She feels used. But here's the thing. It can be painful to be around someone you like like that, knowing that they're probably pursuing somebody else. It can hurt his confidence. And he has a right to choose the relationships that he wants to be in, especially when he's not getting what he wants out of them. And you know, she makes such an amazing and valid point. Modern day women believe that they are the prize and that they are entitled to everything, that a man is just there to provide value and utility in their lives and that they are not responsible or accountable for anything other than their presence. The guy should just be thankful that they're allowing him to be there because there are many other guys that would jump at the chance to be in her life, to be a part of her life, and to allow her to bestow their presence upon them. This is a very narcissistic way of viewing things. Women want to have a man that will give them the benefits of a boyfriend without them giving anything in exchange. And on top of that, they want the man to watch as they go on dates and have relationships with other men as they are still providing utility to them. It's literally a classic ca case of, I'm going to have my cake and eat it too. And historically, men would never do things like this. They would never settle for these types of relationships. But men have been conditioned by society to accept just about anything a woman says or does, including lies. That's the reason why M2 is raging once again and why it even raged in the first place, because of the believe all narrative Basically, a woman can never do any wrong. Even when she's wrong, she's right. And men are always guilty until proven innocent. And even when they're proven innocent, it doesn't matter because they're still guilty. This is the ultimate narrative that is out there. Wh you know, women are victims, powerful victims, and men are villains. You know, pathetic villains. And that's... and. It's been going on for so long. I mean, look how television changed since, since the 80s. We went from shows like The Cosby Show, which showed the results of a strong patriarchal family, to, you know, to modern-day shows starting in the 2000s. And some of it even started in the 90s, and then it became just very prominent in the 2000s to show a str shows where it's a strong matriarchal presence where the woman is a doctor and sassy and brilliant. And, you know, the daughter is going to go to an Ivy league school while their son is literally a nitwit who can't get girls and is not, doesn't really have much of a future. Hopefully he can get a job driving a truck and they're going to portray him as a total loser driving that truck. And, uh, you know, the father is a total nincompoop who is essentially Homer Simpson. You know, he's he's not too bright. He's just there for comic relief. He hit the lottery that finding some woman that would be in a relationship with him. I mean, that's that's the continuous nar narrative, you know, and it's it just basically amounts to woman good, man bad. Do you guys remember Animal For Farm and how that actually played out in the end where you know, the animal said, how, how did it go, guys? Was it four legs good, two legs bad? But do, if you remember the ending of Animal Farm, you know, basically they set up a socialist society that then became a communist society where there were many of the animals that got deleted, tons of betrayals. And by the end of the book, 
you know, instead they went from, you know, four legs, uh, f- four legs good, two legs bad, to four legs good, but two legs better, because now the now the pigs, you know, who had essentially taken over the farm, kind of basically like the matriarchy, were now walking around on two legs like men and making deals and negotiations with the men. And they basically had sold their own into indentured servitude. And the, 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 the situation they ended up in is that they ended up much worse than they would have been living under the farmer, living under the rule of the farmer. It's it's absolutely crazy, but that's how societies absolutely work. When you decide that you want to create a society where everyone has the same and we're going to call this equitable and it's kindness. Guys, you have to remember that people that people who support socialism and communism, they believe that communism is kindness. You know, it's not a form of it's not control, which is really that's what they believe. They say it's not control. It's kindness. Communism is kindness. I mean, guys, think of the and then we look at the countries where they've tried this out, and we see the ultimate result of that. We see how you know the country's absolutely fair. We look at Cuba. How's Cuba doing? How did Cuba do under communism? We look at North Korea. How's North Korea doing with that? You know, how are the people doing in the country? Are they eating well? Are they living well? Let's look at Russia. How did Russia do with that? Oh, we already know. You know, the USSR actually fell in the, in the early 90s, and it was an extremely difficult transition to a democratic government, you know, laissez-faire. How did it work for China? Oh, we already know that. They had to transition over to a more democratic society, again, with free trade, to so that they could absolutely sustain their population. If they had not done this, then there would have uh, been significant, I mean, the country would have been in an extraordinary poverty. You know, for everyone who says that they don't like capitalism, let's look at, you know, the results of, of, of socialism and communism. Venezuela, socialism. What, hap- let's, what happened in Venezuela? Oh, well, everything basically collapsed. Companies were told that, they, you know, the prices would be regulated or capped in the country. So you can't sell your product for more than this in, Ven- in Venezuela. So what do companies eventually do? They say, okay, well, we won't sell anything in your country anymore. We will just stop doing business here. And then when they decided that, okay, well, all right, you know, we're, we're not going to do this anymore. We'll allow you to sell your products here again. They are met with sky high inflation because the value of their currency has sunk down rapidly. Don't forget that at one time, Venezuela was the third richest country, third wealthiest country in the Western Hemisphere. And, you know, what is Venezuela today? Venezuela is what if is now in is now a poverty stricken country that many people are trying to escape. They do pretty much all their transactions in the bolivar and you know this is this is this is this is the results of you know the saying that well capitalism is not is is capitalism bad we're going to try something else and we're going to go from there guys want another you want another example many of you like visiting jamaica and, and vacationing in jamaica but you also know that there's a lot of poverty in jamaica how did that happen jamaicans are such, such nice people they're really hardworking people, the ones that I've come across. Well, there's actually an explanation for that. You see, when Jamaica became an independent country, they were actually thriving. And they were thriving so much that there were people in the country, specifically the first prime minister, to my understanding, who said, you know what? We're so prosperous. Let's try socialism. So they tried socialism for like 20 years. And over that time, it destroyed their economy. The country never recovered from socialism, and now they have unemployment rates of around 20%. That's the last time I reviewed that. Around 20%. 20%. And that's the effect of socialism. And it's amazing because the same people who you know, supported this and pushed for it, when everything goes downhill, 
What do they do? They actually abandon their countries, move to a, a country that is strictly capitalist, and then they begin pushing and advocating for the same type of government and the same type of policies that ultimately led to their countries sinking into extraordinary hardship that they were never able to recover from. Don't forget that in Venezuela, when things went downhill in Venezuela, women were no longer able to access hygienic products. Toilet paper became non-existent. This is what they, I mean, the basic, the basic living things did not exist anymore. It's amazing when women talk about the pink tax and how certain things should be free, hygienic products should be free, but guess what? Someone has to pay for these things. They are not free. It requires labor. And this is something that women don't comprehend. What they truly want is they want men to do the labor and them to benefit from it and live off the labor. They want the government to reallocate wealth and resources from men to subsidize the living of women indefinitely, providing housing, sh well, so shelter, food, clothing, disposable income, health care. All of this should be provided by the government. And you know what's intriguing about this? It'd be really interesting if you asked women, should men and women have equal access to to uh to bet to resources under socialism or communism and it'd be very interesting to see the responses because right off the bat i will i will predict there will be a large number of women who will actually say specifically feminists who will say no that men and women should not have equal access to resources under socialism and or communism because we should be striving for equity to to to, to create equality why would you give someone who's making $100,000 a year, equal access to resources, to uh, equal access to resources, that's someone who is making, you know, $20,000 a year. That doesn't make any sense. What we need to do is give, you know, and we know that women typically are, you know, not paid for their la emotional labor in the, in the home. They're not paid. So, you know, women who don't work should be receiving this. We know that, you know, there is a gap in the amount of wages that men and women earn. So obviously you would not just hand out free money to men. You would give this, you would give people who would most benefit from this, who are most affected by, most affected by the, uh, by the differences in income and, and wealth inequality uh, uh, more or our money period. And because, you know, men naturally have the advantage in society, this is, it, it's not necessary for men to re even receive help, this type of aid, because they're born with a gold spoon in their mouth. They're born with everything. Just by being men, they're going to get access. They're going to get all of these fr things for free that women, you know, that women are restricted on and have had to fight for. This is, this is going to be the argument. This is 100% the argument that they would use. So they would be fighting for socialism for some but not socialism for all, or communism for some, but not communism for all. Yeah. Guys, help get this channel to 100,000 subscribers if you're enjoying the content by subscribing to the channel if you already haven't, liking the video, and turning on notifications to never miss another video ever again. Friend zone men are ending their friendships with women. What do you think regarding this and everything else we discussed in the video? I want to hear your thoughts, so let's talk about them in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away, and cheers.